All right, I'm going to go through a little bit on how to set this machine up. What we're going to do first of all is set the collet. Install this collet, the stud feed tube, and there's another part in here I'll show you. But the first thing we need to do is disconnect the air because this is all under pressure here. So I'll remove the air from the system. And there's a little set screw on the front here. Let's me pull this feed tube out. And there's a collet clamping nut underneath here that holds the collet in place. You never want to over tighten this nut. It just has to be not hand tight but a little bit more. Let me remove the screw it all the way. What we have here, here's the little nut, but this is the stud holder and it comes with a push rod and then there's a group of spacers, a set of spacers that comes with them. And what this is, is they call it a, the, the, a BMS1 kit and each kit is for a different diameter stud. So you have, you'll have the stud holder the pushing rod, the feed tube, and here's one of the kits here, a new kit. It'll have these items, and then it'll have a, a lot of options on the spacers that go here. And what the spacers do is determine how far the push rod moves down into this uh, stud holder. You can see the stud goes into this uh, slot here. The feed tube will be lined up like this. This push rod moves up, the stud goes past that point, and then it pushes the stud into the weld position. We install the spacers to get the stud to uh, come out the right amount of difference at the end of the collet. And what we want is the stud to be sticking out about an eighth inch past the end of the stud holder. So you don't want a stud that's sticking out that far, and you don't want it to not be able to come out through the end of the collet. So what you do is you install or remove these spacers to adjust for different lengths of studs. What we could do is lay a stud in here like this and I have the spacer installed. I already know which one to set up for this particular length. And if I push it, you'll see that when the system works, that's how far the stud's going to be sticking out. And you just want it, the stud to be held securely for the welding operation. These are air seals here. Drop that, but there's an O-ring here and there's also an O-ring inside here. So you can apply a little bit of silicone grease to make these things, uh, oops, forgot the spacer here. Go in here easily. There's a key machined in the front of this uh, stud holder. So when we install it back in the machine, piston goes up in here and this will only go in one way it'll be with a slot facing the front and that keyway will only allow it to go in a certain direction then we install this nut Tighten it a little bit, not too tight. If I push the button on the top of the weld head, you'll see this piston move up. And lead. Oh, yep, forgot to put the air to it. You can see the action of the piston. It's actually acts as a pneumatic, uh, like a pneumatic cylinder.
And then the feed tube also has a key in it that lines it up. There's a little pin right here. The hole here, there's a line. You can line that up with this pin. The, so the, all these components are lined correctly now. When you drop or blow a stud into the machine, it'll load that stud. So this is basically how you install the uh, stud holder or the whole kit. And you'll have a different kit for each diameter stud. So we have like M3, uh, M4, and M5. Uh, so whenever you're going to change from one diameter to another, you have to install a different kit. So that's basically this part of the setup. And I'll do another video here on how to set the, the head up.